say this, uh, you guys are certainly the talk of the town in New York City right now. Uh, there's a lot of buzz in our office about uh, this partnership. Uh, everyone's very excited just to learn more about you and people have been, you know, kind of looking at the listings and everything like that. And uh, Everyone's just generally uh, very, very excited about this. So uh, we just feel blessed to be here and uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun today. So. Um, you know, you guys have extended family in New York now. Uh, I'm your crazy cousin Gino that you never knew about. Um, so I, I think today we're gonna we're gonna talk about a few different things. Actually, before I start, just a little bit about myself. Uh, I've been in real estate now for about 10 years uh, as an agent and associate broker. Uh, I was with a company called Elevin Real Estate and Development uh, for a majority of my career, where I, where I was an agent, did a lot of sales, and luxury rentals. And, things of that nature. And in the last like three years or so, uh, as a training and development manager, putting together sales programs and mentorship programs and coaching uh, and things of that nature. So uh, when I joined Portrin uh, about eight months ago, I was very excited about this new opportunity and uh, everything that they were doing. But I really liked being part of like a boutique firm. Uh, most of my career, I was part of smaller firms anywhere from 50 to 150 agents, uh, because I like the feeling uh, of extended family. Like, you feel like you're co-workers, you kind of know everyone, uh, and that was always very special. But I've been blown away ever since joining Corcoran uh, over the last eight months, just how close everyone is. Uh, I think you guys are going to get a real sense of just the history, uh, the culture, and I could say for one thing, like the agents and the managers, there's just really a real sense of family there. Uh, I work at a space called Agent Studio, uh, which is in downtown Manhattan, where it's a dedicated space to kind of learning and development. So we really believe in collaboration and giving back to our agents. So I think as we go through the presentation today, I think you're really uh, going to feel that. So uh, just a little bit about today's agenda, we'll talk about the history, uh, the brand, some iconic advertising uh, that we've done over the years, and then some uh, marketing tools and systems that are really going to help you guys uh, with your business. So a little bit about our history. Uh, I guess before I start, uh, before the big announcement last week, just a show of hands, how many of you guys heard of corporate? Okay, about half. About half. <laughs> Those of you that did hear of Corcoran before the announcement, what did you think of when you heard the name Corcoran? The Hamptons. Hamptons, okay. Anyone else? Barbara. 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 <laughs> right, that, that's like kind of the, one of the, the top things that we get. Matter of fact, we were interviewing one of our top agents recently uh, at Agent Studio, and she says she, you know, quite frequently she'll go on listing presentations, and the seller will always ask, oh, how's Barbara doing? You know, yeah. you know. <laughs> You know, things of that nature. And she has to say, well, you know, she hasn't been in, in the business in the last, you know, 18 or so years. But a lot of times when people think of Corcoran, they think of Barbara. And it's, it's because of, you know, the company that she <coughs> built and uh, the culture that she created. So in 1973, uh, this young girl who was working as a, a, a waitress and a receptionist, you know, she had this incredible big personality and she was a hard worker. And someone says to her, it's like, you know, why don't you give real estate a shot? I think you would, you would do great in it. Um, and she didn't kind of know where to start, but she started talking, uh, asking around, and uh, she managed to get uh, a loan. It was about for $1,000, and she started this, this company, and she didn't know how to get any listings, okay? So she calls up her old boss. She was a receptionist for this company uh, that owned uh, quite a few rental buildings in Manhattan. She's like, hey, I'm getting in, into real estate. Uh, do you have any listings that you know you would consider giving me? And he wasn't very interested in giving Barbara any listings, but she convinced him to give this one. It was a one-bedroom apartment uh, on the Upper East Side, but it was a super's apartment. Uh, it was on a lower level. It was very dark. Um, wasn't very special, and it was going for three hundred and forty dollars. If you could imagine that <laughs> in Manhattan. So she goes to put uh, the apartment on the New York Times, which is, that was primarily where you would advertise all your listings. Obviously, no internet then and no pictures or anything. Uh, and she was a little discouraged because when she looked at the New York Times, she saw so many other apartments just like it. Same price range, same area. She's like, I'm going to spend all my money and why are people going to call me for this particular listing? 
So she was trying to think on her feet and think of a way to kind of stand out. Uh, and she convinced the super to put up a half wall in the living room, and she marketed it as a one bedroom with a den. And she actually got 60 phone calls from that one little listing, and that was kind of the start of how she got involved in real estate. So she started taking some of that experience, and she started doing a lot of rentals, but she never did any sales. And one day she's out with a, a client, she's showing him a bunch of apartments, and he's like, you know, I, would, I think I want to buy one of these. And she's like, whoa, you can't buy this, they're just for rent. And he's like, oh no, I came here to buy, I didn't come here to rent. So she got very nervous because she says, you know, if I would have told him that I don't do sales, he would have went with another broker. So she says, okay, this is what we're going to do. You don't know New York City. You can't just go out buying a apartment without knowing the neighborhoods. She's like, I'm going to give you a neighborhood tour of all these different neighborhoods, and then the next day we'll go out and see listings. Now, here's the catch. In New York City at that time, there was no co-broking. Okay? So if you would have called another agency and said, hey, I have a buyer, can we work something out with a co broker you would have got hung up on, right? So she had no listings. She had no experience in sales, so she was kind of thinking on her feet. She gives this guy a full tour of the Upper East Side, Sutton Place, Central Park, all these different things. Here are the subways, here are the restaurants, right? And then at the end of the day, she runs home, and she looks in the paper, and she starts calling all the for sale by owners. And she's like, hey, I got this great buyer. The only thing, he needs to see it tomorrow morning at such and such time. So thinking on her feet, she was able to pull it off. She wound up getting three apartments for him to see, and on the third apartment, he actually bought it uh, for $36,000 uh, in Midtown Manhattan. So that was kind of the, the, the start of how she got into sales. And the thing in interesting about Barbara, uh, she didn't do many sales herself, but after she got that commission, she started hiring sales agents. And that was the one thing that was very unique about her, that she was really good at seeing the potential in people, and she was able to like speak into people's lives. So as the company went on, they started expanding and growing uh, very organically, very naturally. Uh, in 1983, 10 years later, they opened up another office on the Upper West Side, uh, and then a young girl comes into her office, I think it was around 1984, and says, hey, I want to I do real estate. And, you know, at this time, corporate was starting to become pretty prominent. And Barbara interviews this girl, and she's like, I don't know. You don't seem like the type that's going to stick around very long. I don't know if this is for you. Well, 35 years later, Pam Lindman is still here today. Um, at 24 years old, she started her career as a real estate agent. And within one year, she became the top agent uh, in the company. And she really expanded the firm to downtown Manhattan. Uh, and she became a sales manager, I think, before she was 30 years old. Uh, and then became a partner, uh, convincing Barbara to get into new development. And they started what is called the Corporate Marketing Group, which was all about new development uh, in that particular area. So she's got a, an incredible story, um, Pam does, sorry about that. Um, and then the fact that she's actually been part of corporate longer than Barbara has. So I always like to ask the question, like, what do you think of when you think of corporate? And most people say, Barbara, but Pam's story is truly uh, incredible. And when she took over in 2001, uh, she helped lead the expansion into the Hamptons uh, and also in Palm Beach, uh, Florida. In 2017, uh, we opened Agent Studio, which is in downtown Manhattan, which I'll talk about later. Uh, and now in 2020, we're going global, and you guys are, are one of our first partners, which we're, we're truly excited about. So it's kind of funny to think that in two, 2020, we're here because of uh, a one bedroom with a den, right? Uh, and it, it's kind of funny how things kind of start and, 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 and change. But I wanted to just say all that because, you know, you know, we've been in the business now for 45 plus years, and it's a lot of real estate experience. You know, we're not like some of these companies that maybe you've seen in the area that, you know, just kind of pop up overnight with a, with a lot of money and just start buying things. We've really grown organically over time, and we really believe in investing in our agents uh, and really focusing in on our clients. So kind of uh, a little bit more history. Uh, a lot of what we've done through the years has really been uh, pioneered through in being a thought leader. So we were one of the first real estate companies to ever have a website. 
you know, I mentioned that most of things were done uh, on the East Coast in the New York Times, right? And at that time, uh, brokers weren't even sharing addresses. It would just say something like townhouse in Upper East Side, two bed, two bath downtown, and you would have to call. Corcoran really believed in sharing information uh, with other brokerages. I was interviewing, um, not interviewing, but talking to a lot of managers in the company, and I was talking to this one, her name is Juliana, and she's been with the company now for over 30 years, and she remembers when Corcoran went into uh, Brooklyn. And at that time, Brooklyn was like the Wild West. It's like, you did not share your listings, it was just yours, you didn't do anything. And Barbara came in there and she threw a big party. Uh, she invited all these other firms and she says, hey, we're going to do business together. And she just had that electric personality. Uh, and as time goes on, it started to really grow. Uh, we were the first one to kind of create a, a market report. Uh, the Corcoran report, uh, report has become very popular over the years. So this, this whole idea of collaboration, uh, innovation, and being a thought leader uh, is really what Corcoran is about. Pam, I, I mentioned uh, a lot about her already. Uh, so where we are now, uh, 3,000 plus agents uh, in 50 plus offices. Again, just really focusing on uh, that growth has really happened organically uh, and over time. Some of the offices all throughout. Uh, some notable sales. Uh, so you'll notice the one on the top uh, in 2019, uh, which was last year, 220 Central Park South. We sold a penthouse for $238 million, which was you know truly incredible. You can see some of these things. Uh, the one in Tribeca, that was the most expensive uh, apartment that ever sold in downtown Manhattan. So you see some of these, and these things obviously grab your attention, right? And people like to write about them in the paper uh, and speak about them in the media. But the one thing, thing uh, great about Corcoran is that we kind of play well in all different price points. A lot of times people think of us as only luxury, and we do a lot of high-end stuff. But we all, we're also about you know, helping a couple find their first apartment, right? And we believe in just servicing the client wherever they are uh, in life. So a little introduction into the brand. I want to show you guys this video quick. Uh, and this is going to be Christina Panos, who's our uh, chief marketing officer. Finance on real estate is a super emotional process, and only by taking the time, by listening, by understanding really what it is that you need and how you're going to live, can we find the right home. The one thing that really can't be commoditized is empathy, understanding, and that's really what we specialize in. We started the launch of Open War back in 2005 with a campaign shot by Team Barney. We have followed that up over the years, working with some of the best photographers, including and really developed high impact, super powerful advertising that really helps people understand what sets this company apart. Our goal in all of the advertising that we do is to connect to people, to connect first on an emotional level, to let them know we understand them, we know what this process is all about, and that we want to develop a relationship with them. In many cases, agents tell me that they come to the department because of the brand. They open doors for them, they own a pitch, and person they're pitching to knows who we are. And it makes people feel like they have a really large, important, and empathetic brand behind them as they go into you know, one of the most difficult processes from the gone for a while with buying and selling real estate. The agents can feel really wonderful going into a page knowing that they have this company and this brand behind them, which really sets them apart from anything else. Uh, so like I mentioned, that's Christina Panos. I, I think um, I don't know if you guys, did they have a chance to meet her last week? I don't know if she was, was she here or not? Uh, so Christina came actually from a uh, marketing advertising background with MasterCard. So she actually worked on the Priceless campaign overseas. And when she came to Corcoran in 2005, I think it was around, uh, she really wanted to develop a campaign uh, that was going to connect with our clients, right? So it, she came up with the, the slogan, uh, Live Who You Are. And just a key insight uh, into a lot of the things that we do, we find a home to match the heart. Realizing your dream for living is at the center of everything that we do. Um, you know, it, it's interesting that when you think about kind of our profession, 
uh, as real estate agents. What type of profession uh, will people give you the keys to your home and allow you to bring strangers inside? Right? It's kind of funny when you think about it. Let's add to that. What about where you see all their financial information as well? How about add on to that and say, well, you see them at the highest highs, the lowest lows. They're sharing their dreams with you. You're talking to them sometimes every day. You see them every week. They're trusting you with their, you know, their biggest possession, their biggest asset, right? So it really is uh, an incredible amount of trust uh, that we get as real estate agents, right? So we always want to make sure that the client uh, is at the center of everything that we're doing. So the real difference is, is simple. Most real estate firms are about transactions, but Corcoran is really about people, okay? And I think everything that you're gonna see when we start showing you some of our different marketing and advertising campaigns over the years, you'll see that it really is about the person, right? It's, it's about the buyer and about the seller. So the creative expression, as you guys have probably heard, is live who you are, right? So when you're, when you're showing someone a, a house or an apartment, Right? People have to see themselves living there. You know, whenever I would show apartments, I would always look for people's body language. Right? A lot of times they can give you a checklist or a wish list, but really once they get inside, you start seeing how they start to visualize you know, whether or not they can see their family there, where are the kids going to play, where is the dog going to be, uh, will my furniture fit, all these different types of, of things. You, when you see people start visualizing on, the, on whether or not they can be creating memories there, that's when you know uh, they're really interested. So a little bit about uh, the, the, the DNA behind corporate and live who you are. Uh, personal, there's, a, there's human touch involved. You know, I think now that obviously there's uh, so much information out there, a lot of technology, which is great. Um, but you know, if you're coming into a new area, right, like, like us, we're coming you know, from New York, you know, we could look on Yelp for places to eat and things to do. But I would much rather uh, speak to a local, right? I want, I want some insight, you know, where do the locals hang out? Where do they eat? Uh, where is a great place to, uh, to grab a drink? Uh, what do people do around here? You know, you can find a lot of that information online, and that's good. But I would much rather have that one-on-one that -on -one interaction. Uh, you'll also see that we're very uh, playful and warm. But we are sharp with an edge, too. So we're, we try not to take ourselves too seriously. So hopefully that, that kind of comes across when you start seeing uh, the different campaigns. Uh, so this is uh, the Live Who You Are uh, manifesto, uh, if you will. So I'll just read it really quick and then we can kind of talk through it. Uh, it's never just about a house or an apartment. It's more than a zip code, more than a hardwood floor or pre-war details. When it's right, a home is not just a physical space where you reside. It's the first best expression of who you are as an individual, as a couple, and as a family. At Corcoran, we build our business around this very human truth, making every effort to understand your hopes, your dreams, and your unique personality. Then we use that understanding and all our resources to find the homes that go beyond the checklist and even the wish list, to the wonderful feeling you get when something just feels right. At Corcoran, we know it's much more than just a house or an apartment. It's where you live and who you are. And I think you guys probably, you kind of maybe resonate that, you know, as I, I begin to read it. I know for me, when I was, um, you know, um, showing apartments to various different clients uh, in different homes and townhouses, there were a lot of times I was showing people 30, 40 different places, right? And a lot of times they want to give up. And most of the time, I wanted them to give up, right? Because it gets frustrating, right? Because it's like, okay, you told me everything that you want, and I showed it to you, and yet you still, you still don't like it, right? But it's, you know, even though a lot of times people say they're making the decision with their head, they're moved by their heart. Live who you are. <laughs> right? It, 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 is, it is very much a hard decision, right? So I remember, you know, uh, you know, years back, you know, taking clients out. Their names were uh, Marion and Sal. Uh, Marion was... Uh, uh, an investment banker, and Sal was a corporate lawyer. Really smart people, really educated. They, they knew exactly what, where they wanted to live. They knew exactly what they wanted. And I showed it to them. And I showed them multiple things, but something just wasn't right. You know? But, you know, kind of taking some of that insight and some of the resources I had, 
I said, listen, you know, you mentioned that you have, you have dogs and you like parks. I know you really want to live in Chelsea or Tribeca, but would you consider maybe going up to the Upper West Side, right? Would you consider that? There was a little pushback, but after a while, we started seeing some open houses. I started showing them some things, and I'll never forget the moment when they walked in, right? And they found that apartment that just felt right. Here, here they were, like these very uh, type A analytical clients, and they're nearly in tears, right? Because for months and months, they poured everything into this search, thinking they were going to give up, and now all of a sudden, they found something that just matched their heart's desire, right? So that's kind of what it's about, right? It's not about uh, necessarily me as the agent, you know, trying to be the hero, right? They're the heroes. They're the ones that are going to start the family there. They're the ones that are going to entertain there and, and have these moments and memories. So when I start showing you some of the advertising and different things that we've done over the years, uh, keep that in mind that we always try to keep it about the client uh, and what they're looking for. Does that make sense? Um, so this is a, a photographer, her name is Tina Barney. Uh, this was done in 2005 at the beginning uh, of the Live Who You Are campaign. Notice it's uh, in black and white. Uh, Tina Barney, really well known, she's been featured in MoMA, uh, in, in New York and I believe San Francisco. But notice she, uh, she takes a lot of candid shots. So the one on the left is kind of just a family hanging out on the stoop um, in the city. This other one, uh, in, in down in the beach, and I love this little guy here, new development, right? <laughs> and, and that's kind of what it's about. And she always had this belief that uh, regardless of where you lived or uh, where you were, that families and people tend to kind of do the same things, right? Oh, just before yep. you, and then, oh, um, yes. so not only was um, so Tina Barney more, she didn't really do commercial work, so this was the first, and then we also featured it in black and white, um, as Gina mentioned, to high, you know, highlight the color bar. And as you see through the advertising, you'll see how like, the color bar has progressed to the degree he has. So right now it's segmented by region, but as we've moved on to um, the gradient color bar that you know, it's really supposed to be all encompassing of all regions and really just open that up first. So here's another one, uh, 2014. Uh, have any of you guys heard of Annie Leibovitz? Oh yeah, of course. Right? Famous uh, photographer. So it's incredible that we would work with such a high caliber uh, artist. Um, you know, Annie, uh, for those of you who don't know, she actually was with Rolling Stone, Mag Rolling Stone Magazine for a long time. And she was the one uh, who did, uh, was in a, a session with uh, John Lennon and Oko Ono literally five hours before he was murdered in New York. But she's done everything from presidential uh, uh, to actors and celebrities, so it's really incredible that she was able to take part in this campaign with us. Uh, there on the left, uh, you'll see Tyson Chandler, uh, who was the center for the New York Knicks, and you kind of see him just you know, being dead, right? Being around home and his uh, kids hanging all over him. Uh, unfortunately, Annie couldn't help us win any games, <laughs> um, but it was, it was really a, a nice campaign. The one in the middle, uh, Misty Copeland, um, just kind of hanging out at home, relaxing and uh, striking a pose. <laughs> 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 she's, kind of she, she's now a prima ballerina. Yeah. Couldn't tell it that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, on the right, I think that's Sarah's uncle. Who's, who's uh, that? Jimmy Buffett. Jimmy Buffett. Not, not really. Yeah. Not really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would be awesome. But laid back vibes uh, uh, down in, in Palm Beach. So just really cool. And again, not necessarily so much this national campaign uh, about the home. It's, it's, it's about the people in or outside the home and these little memories that they're, they're creating. This other one, uh, more recently done in uh, 2017, Paul Costello. Uh, this was called the Be Home Campaign. Uh, the one on the left, um, you know, a dad dressing up like a merman. Is anyone dressed up like a merman here? Uh, but you know, just you know, spending time with his daughter, right? And just laughing and, and, and having fun. Um, the dog jumping in the bed, right? Uh, the girls celebrating getting their, you know, their first apartment together. Again, just all about the, the memories, yes. So where, where were these published? And are we going to be doing some things locally here in Reno, similar to this? And where will they go? And... Great question. 
Yeah, so um, where we have, um, these are our brand campaigns, so we, that's why we focus more on the moment, and then we'll be doing things that, you know, encompass all of our regions, but when it comes to really the local campaigns, we'll be working with um, your team and Stephanie, and um, it just to really make sure that we're still encompassing that localized feel. To be to be continued. Definitely stay tuned, and we'll be getting updates on that. Yeah. So you see, uh, we've done things in print, digital, also outdoor. Uh, Simone Missoni, uh, really well known illustrator uh, uh, in the New Yorker. Uh, so we're actually working with uh, some of your leadership now on creating uh, an image that will be in uh, the Reno Tahoe area. So stay tuned There's for one that. For each. One, yep, one, one for each. We're almost there. <laughs> so you guys will uh, will have one pretty soon. I think we just uh, finished uh, San Francisco's, which is pretty cool. So I know we're really excited for one for Reno. Another little sizzle.
anything that's going to be, you know, then pulled into any sort of marketing materials as well as .com, and then it will be fed into this format. So there's really only one, you know, and we're going to be reviewing um, the headshots so that they are all mm -hmm. so they're uh, consistent, but mm -hmm. not black and white. Heavily airbrushed. What did you say? Heavily airbrushed. Black and white. Yes. Yeah. 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 She said she's no, but we and, and it's going to have a, a, a local background. So the Lake Tahoe, we have a picture for the back. The background is going to be Tahoe, and then we're going to be that. Most dynamic. Yeah. <laughs> How many of you guys have seen uh, the Inhabit blog on the site? A few of you? If you get a chance, maybe later this week, check it out. It's on Corcoran.com. It's basically our lifestyle blog. So it's less about listings, although we do feature some uh, high-profile listings on there as well. It's a lot about design, uh, architecture, culture, food, uh, anything that's going on in a particular neighborhood or area. Um, as you guys know, when people are deciding for a place to live, uh, they want to know uh, uh, insight into that particular neighborhood. So the Inhabit blog is, is really a great way uh, to get more insight into a particular area. Um, and the other thing... Uh, the other thing that's great uh, in the Inhabit blog that Sarah's going to show us in a little bit, uh, we do this thing called the Local Next Door, uh, where we take a few agents that specialize uh, in a particular area, um, and they'll do like a little sizzle reel on them. And again, less about the listing, more about uh, the agent and the particular neighborhood. So, where do you eat? Where do you get coffee? Um, where do you, what do you like to do for fun? So it's kind of like a day in the life kind of thing. It's done really nicely, and um, Sarah's going to show us uh, MyCorcoran.com, we'll, uh, we'll talk a little bit about this. This is our uh, intranet site. So it's where you can be able to get access to various things like Agent Studio Online, uh, the Presentations Tool, uh, and various things. Uh, I'm not going to steal Sarah's thunder on this, but our Presentation Tool uh, is really beautiful. Uh, when you're going on uh, a pitch to get a listing, I think you guys are going to be really impressed by just by the quality and just how easy it is to customize, um, adding photos and videos and, and, and things like that. So Sarah's going to have to give us a presentation on that. Uh, syndication. So when your um, listings go to corporate.com, uh, obviously it's going to get syndicated uh, locally, nationally, and globally. Okay. Social AI. So we've partnered with uh, a company called Ad Phoenix. Uh, Ad Phoenix does a lot of marketing on social media, like for instance Facebook. So what it does is it will monitor uh, buyers' behavior. So if if certain people on Facebook are looking for homes in a particular area, we want to make it so that your listings are popping up right in front of them, which is obviously going to drive more traffic. So just to pause for a second, has anyone noticed on Facebook that you're talking and you're looking at something and then all of a sudden all these things come up and you're like, this is a little creepy, but you know, it also works to our benefit uh, when you are that advertising. So that's what really social AI, it's, um, a con it's um, an artificial intelligence, so it really continues to learn as, um, as people are interacting with it. And so it's uh, Facebook advertising that then you can use and um, promote your clients' uh, properties. Mm -hmm. And then on the right here, you're also given, for every um, advertisement, you're given a URL, which will give them, you can share with your clients, give them real-time updates. Because so they can go in and check to see how they're, how they're doing, if people are, you know, interacting with them, and um, they'll probably only check it once and completely forget, but they have it, or you can yeah. remind them about it, and it's a really great tool. Yeah. And obviously a lot of advertising in the past has, has been with more demographics, income, things of that nature. This is more geared to people who are actually searching for homes 
or searching for a real estate agent. So we can also do this for your listings, but we could also do it for your agent pages as well. So you could potentially pop up in front of uh, uh, buyers and sellers. And it's a great feature to say, you know, I put out this advertising, we reach, um, you know, 10,000 people, and you can really take this analytics and get that back to your, uh, your seller. Yeah. Showcase what you're doing. Uh, social media playbook. So uh, we do this thing called Social Media Day. Uh, we've held it at, for instance, uh, uh, Agent Studio. And essentially what we do is we open it up to all our agents. Uh, it's completely voluntary. But we had how many agents participate in this? Uh, this past year we had about 1,008. 1,008? Uh -huh. Yes. 1,008. <laughs> it could be 10. It had to be 8. <laughs> So basically, those 1,008 uh, <laughs> real estate agents participated in this study, uh, basically where they were sharing their best practices and everything that they were doing on social media. And then at the end of the year, we compiled the data and the analytics, and we put the best practices uh, in this social media playbook. Uh, so this is a, a great tool. Uh, we've, we've actually hosted panels and, and discussions and things of that nature. But this is something that will be uh, posted that you guys will have access to. But I think the more important thing, uh, we're excited that in the future to kind of partner with you guys and to see that what you're doing on social media as well. So stay tuned for that and to, to see how we can work together. And that is available on mycorker.com, so you can jump in. There's a digital version and you can um, go into those insights. Yep. So a little bit about uh, learning, uh, which is kind of my, my area of focus. Uh, so we have uh, various different programs that we have for, for training and just overall development. I did mention this thing called uh, Agent Studio. So I work out of here uh, in Union Square in downtown Manhattan. Uh, basically, it's, it's 8,000 square feet uh, dedicated to learning and development. So we'll do things from uh, creative coaching sessions, uh, Monday morning meditation. Uh, we'll host uh, panels where people will come in and talk about various different things. Uh, recently we did something called Digital to Dollars, where we had a lot of agents come in and share their best practices on what they're doing on Instagram stories, um, or Pinterest, or, or these various different platforms. And one of the things that we find is that agents like to learn from other agents, right? Sometimes, you know, it's, it's better to hear something from your peer. I know I always, uh, I, I like that as well. So uh, the reason why that we share this uh, is because we've developed something called Agent Studio Online. So even though you might not be able to get to New York, however, if you are in New York, look us up. We'd love to give you a tour of the space. Uh, we have various different education courses on there. Uh, we have some videos uh, and some best practices. So, you know, we're excited to kind of just come alongside you guys and see, you know, how we can help um, and whatnot. And I think I may have a video. Well, first I'll, I'll talk briefly about this. Uh, we have three courses that we've developed. Uh, one is called Agent Productivity. Uh, the other one is Buyers and Listings. And the cool thing about these programs, uh, it's not just a workbook. Uh, it can be done live. It can be done virtually. And we do have some video content that goes along with it. And a lot of the videos were actually done by some of our agents. So I will, uh, I'll show you guys this one real quick. Is it plugged in? Overall, listings are the way that you sort of start building upon your business. 
people see your sign, and sometimes they'll come to you to see if you would be interested in giving them some information about the market for their place, and then you pick up additional listings. Having a strong listing presentation is key to my success. The listing presentation is the opportunity to establish credibility and ultimately prove that you're the best person for the job. This is the first time you're meeting with the seller, so first impressions are everything. The client knows if they're going to hire you in the first 10 seconds of meeting you often. It's my stage, it's my opportunity to prove to the owner, who will be my client, that I will give them the best outcome, the best price, the most money. I think all of those things come together and allow the person to understand that you are the right person for the job. So just a little taste of some of those videos. I know it was a little lag there. Uh, I do apologize. But you can see um, those were agents, right, talking about you know listing presentation and, and different things that they do uh, to get listings. And I think it's so important, you know, as an agent, just to just to hear what other people are doing, right? You know, I don't know if you've ever worked uh, with like a personal trainer before, but you know, sometimes it can be frustrating because you go there and they're they're telling you to do things you already know how to do. It's like, well, why are you telling me to do push-ups? I know how to do push-ups. It's like, well, yeah, but you're not doing the push-ups, so that's why we're here to kind of help you, right? So uh, a lot of times it's just we need to be reminded. We need to be, we need to be coached. We need to be encouraged. We need to be, have a little accountability. So I think sometimes when you could hear agents from kind of coast to coast who are doing certain things, you could, you know, develop some new ideas and, and, and kind of figure out what works best for you. So that was a little bit of the, the brand immersion, just to kind of give you a little 101 of you know, who we are. I think, you know, just going back to it, I think we're just really excited about uh, this uh, extended family. And I, I say family because family can extend overnight. Uh, I know that because I'm engaged to be married. Uh, so now I'm immersing myself in Venezuelan culture. Right? So I'm uh, beginning to meet people from uh, different relatives from all over the world. And, uh, it's incredible, right? So I, I hope that you guys are, ex are as excited as we are. Uh, so now I want to, uh, do we want to take maybe? Yeah, let's take a, a quick coffee break. Water, quick coffee break, maybe five minutes, time. and then Sarah's going to come up and show you some of the, the cool tools that we have. Gina, just a really great job with the immersion. He's a much better... Uh, presenter showman than I, but I'm going to you know, give, give it a go. I'm usually more behind the scenes. So I do digital marketing, so I'm, you know, the liaison between marketing and technology and work on, you know, social media, SEO, web, all that kind of stuff. And so what I'm showing you right now is um, my Corcoran. So that's really um, the extra of tool. So when you jump into my Corcoran, um, you then can single sign on to all of this product suite right here. Um, so we have you know, marketing center, presentations, which I'm gonna to show to you shortly, and then agent studio, which Gina's going to show to you in a, in a bit after that. And then you can also, you know, these are your... Um, uh, oh, sorry, are they gonna be able to log in? Or can they log in and kind of go, go as you go? Or is that, is that, are those not ready yet? Or? Um, I, think, I think it's a, about, um, I think there's um, between everything with well, would be probably about a week. Oh. I think until, um, but I'm, I think we can touch base on that, um, just to make sure that I'm, I'm not mm -hmm. okay. But yes, um, and we'll also definitely, don't worry, we'll be um, repeating ourselves um, and going through this multiple times, because it's a lot of information that we're throwing at you, and um, I definitely agree with Stephanie when you're jumping into the platform. Um, that's definitely the best way to, to go about it, I think, um, just with the, the G Suite. Uh, yeah, that's that connector. Um, so, um, you know, this is a single sign-on. I don't know if anyone's familiar, but uh, when you jump in and that way you just sign in once and then it brings you into your credentials for all the other um, applications just to kind of give you that one login, easy to move from um, app product to product. Um, and then, as you mentioned, it habits right here. Um, we highly recommend you know, jumping in. This is a great editorial content that um, you can share with your clients. It's also just a great way to stay top of mind um, for your clients that you want to just check in with and maybe you don't have necessarily too many conversation points, but you see an article that on you know, kitchen renovations and you know that they're renovating their kitchen and you want to share it with them. So 
Um, we, it does feature um, all regions, um, but what we are working towards is really just making everything really global um, and, re and um, relatable despite geographic location. All right, so I'm going to jump into presentations. Here we are. All right, so um, you're going to see a couple of duplicate, duplicates, um, and that's really because, one, I'm a bit of a digital hoarder, but two, um, it's really on um, presentations, once you figure out how you want to present your content, really best practice is duplicate that presentation, and then when you jump in, what you're going to do is you're going to change the address if you're doing it for a different listing, or say you want to just create two different presentations, maybe one, um, for when they're initially uh, starting the process and one is going to be a follow-up. So you, just so you don't have to, you know, reinvent the wheel on all the st different stuff that you customize for your client. So I'm going to jump into the Serena one and see this tool at the top. So once you've duplicated your presentation, what you do is you jump into here and um, you have your collabor collaborators right here. So say if I want to, you know, add or, you know, remove someone, <coughs> so I'm going to add myself there. And you're not limited to the amount of collaborators. So what that does is say you have someone that you work with and you're really partnering on a listing um, or a property, or, you know, you have a you know, marketing assistant or admin that typically helps you with your presentations. You add them as a collaborator, and then they can jump into the presentation and pull your info and work on your behalf while you still stay as the author so no one can, you know, delete the presentation on behalf of you. And there's no limit, so uh, if you wanted to add, you know, 300 people, it might get a little messy on this pop-up, but um, you definitely can do so. And then um, you would just change the property address here and you wanted to feature a different listing and then it would populate with that information either through the MLS or through Dash, um, which we mentioned where all the listing information will live and then it will populate within that listing section. All right, so we um, organize things based on chapters and just so you don't, you don't feel limited at all, um, you can, you know, rearrange things. So say, you know, your clients, there's a lot of questions about Corcoran. And so maybe, you know, it, we're gonna, you, you want to deal with that first. So we're going to move that up. So you can just drag and move around the chapters um, as you wish. And in order to get into the chapters, you just hit this arrow and it expands the information. So what we've done is um, you'll see a lot of similar slides with you know, Gina's presentation. Um, we realize there's going to be a lot of questions, and depending on the client, how, how familiar they are with Corcoran, we wanted to equip you with the tools to really explain the story, and depending on how much background that you want to give about Corcoran, um, we've created this chapter for you, so you can really get into, you know, all their questions, all these new tools that you have, and so we've created all of these um, these different um, slides um, just to get into that storyline. And just like the chapters, you can really you know move things around um, depending on you know however you want to um, display them. You can you know delete slides, and then say I delete that by accident. I just insert the page back in here, and there it is. And these, um, when it comes to the power of Corcoran and um, about our company, so these are static slides. So these are your what we're working with um, Stephanie with, and you know, just crafting the local messaging. Um, but they are going to be image files, so these aren't necessarily the editable slides, but they are going to be um, updated. Um, so we've already kind of jumped in and we've thrown in localized slides as well. And then when it gets to, you know, the most important part, the about me. So let's um, jump into that. So right now, you know, these chapter titles, they're completely editable. Um, they're, you know, you can jump in there depending on however you want to, you know, title it. Um, maybe you don't want to title at all. That's totally up to your discretion. Uh, and then so you, we can show exactly how that works. So obviously. <laughs> We, uh, we come together, you know, 
bar, um, borrow a couple of um, featuring some of your agents here. And then, so these are, that's your bio that then is syndicated from Dash. And then here are your accolades. So accolades, that is a fun way to, you know, connect. Say you have some background of, oh, you went to the same college or, you know, you're from the same town. And just any sort of way to connect with the client. Um, you can really feature here or just about you. Um, you can just kind of throw in your fun facts. And so what these do, if you want to add um, more than four, it immediately um, moves um, to a new one. If I want to delete, it just redistributes within the app. And so I'm editing all right here. Um, and I can just, you know, type on the fly. Say instead of, you know, 35 years of sales experience, I want to put, you know, social media expert. And I'm just going to change that icon to a little thumbs up. Um, so you can edit on the fly and then see right here where it says saving, um, it automatically is saving everything and it will confirm all changes saved. So if you have, you know, you're on the run and you're in your car, you're stuck in traffic uh, and you're trying to run to go meet a client and you think, oh shoot, I really need to make, you know, such and such an edit. Um, you just call up someone, one of your collaborators, they can go in and make that edit and then you just have to hit refresh on your iPad or your computer, or whatever you're going to present off of, and um, all your changes will be there displayed. Can I print these on the printer, like? Yes. Silly? So if you, if I jump back, um, Sorry, that was just something. yeah, it's okay. okay. Um, so we have both one side and two side printing. So what it does is it downloads a file depending on you know if you when you are printing um, in house. It will optimize, you know, for two-sided. Um, if you are just downloading a PDF, um, just to show on, you know, still digitally or to email out as an attachment, we do recommend one-sided because two-sided is going to look a little funny on um, on the PDF visually. Um, and then also what that does is um, I'm going to get into some video feature slides, and the system um, detects anything that isn't necessarily going to be print friendly and it will exclude those slides within this um, print download for you. So you don't have to worry about deleting any sort of chapters or how it's going to mess up the calendar display or anything like that. And then you can also um, copy the link. Uh, if you want to you know, share the real-time presentation, which also allows like, if you want to you know, share the presentation with a client and really use that as your you know, record for when I jump into the marketing plan and you want to, you know, they can continually reference it and you can continually update it. You can share the link with them and when you email the link, it'll do the same thing. They will always have the real-time update, the updated presentation. And then, um, so the About Me, I can show you that. Um, so it also gets into your testimonials, your current listing, everything that's going to be um, inputted for you. Um, it will pull from that record um, dash and have all your information. So don't um, don't be worried. It's not all manual entry. We try and do everything um, you know auto magically uh, by being, having it fed in from the source of record. So I'm going to add in a video just to show how that works. So insert page, and then it confirms. So I haven't edited that. So it's just confirming empty pages are not displayed in the presentation. So just to make sure we're all on the same page there. And uh, Gina mentioned the local next door, so I'm going to show how um, you can add that in here. Subtitle, I can put my name, or really a, an area. And when it comes to video, I mean, uh, local next door is great, but if you have, you know, a neighborhood video that you want to showcase, or when we jump into the marketing plan, if, you know, there's a property video that you've done in the past and you think, you know, this property would be great, and you can showcase the property video here. So don't feel limited. It's more just um, showcasing the um, technology of putting the video in there. So I'm going to grab this Vimeo link. And then as you see, it's going to be embedded within the slide. And then I'm going to play it in um, when I jump into presentation mode. And then you can 
we can move into um, the listing. So you can jump, I mean, it'll, it'll pull in uh, different property imagery, but say you really want to focus on, you know, all of the amenities through, you know, there's a heated pool, you know, whatever is focused on that, um, featured on that, that property, you can just add in, you know, further um, property images, property details here, and then they'll um, populate within here and you can just rearrange, drag, drop um, right here. Okay. And so this stuff will already be pulled in based on whatever has been um, added for your property within Dash. And uh, but you can you know always supplement and make this chapter as robust as you'd like. Question? Yeah. Is that information, can it be uploaded from the MLS? Or is that all uh, uploaded by your transaction coordinator? So we um, pull from Dash, but we do have the ability to, for comparables, it's really working with the MLS as well. Um, so it's kind of, it, the MLS and when I mentioned Dash, they're going to be working together. So um, when you're filling in something, it, you don't have to worry about adding in things into multiple different places. Um, through a third party, they're going to be working together and sync. So anything from the MLS about your listing will be also available through Dash. What's Dash? Yeah. So Dash is um, the back end system. It's you know the living and breathing source of records. So when you add everything into Dash, um, so your office manager will be putting into the listings and your your bio, your headshot, and it's just one destination. And then all of these tools will then pull that information. So if you make any change, you just have to make the change once, and then it will be um, syndicated and fed out through all the different applications. Um, it, yeah, it's depending on um, whatever um, is is set up, but typically um, the office manager will, you know, go in and um, add in that information. But there is the abil ability to um, we're working on syncing Dash with the MLS. So I know you guys can put a lot of stuff on the MLS. So that's something that we're working on, which is why we're. Um, it's going to be about a, a week before you guys get access to all of this great stuff. Um, so this is, you know, the comparable slide, and um, you can jump in and so a search for comparables. Um, this is something um, that we are going that, as I mentioned, it's all going to be working with your MLS right now. We don't have that, um, in, you know, that three-way connection agreement right now. Um, so. Once that's all set up, um, that is where you can have your comparables chapter, and this is just an example of you know how it populates. So whatever um, is going to be fed into MLS, you're able to, you're going to be pulling that in, and then it's going to display the content. And then if there's any fields that isn't there, it's just going to show up blank. And then you can um, edit. You know, say something is a bit of an outlier, um, such as like you know 15 Lewis. I can just Delete that right here and just remove the comparable and then I'll update. Can you and manually enter in comparables? Yes. Um, you can also manually into a, a manually add in comparables as well. But just because you know you know manually adding comparables is a, we're just want to make sure that we're fully connected with MLS so that you don't have to go in and manually add all of your comparables. And then based on whatever comparables that you have, um, this slide will update based on the average price, um, you know, average um, square footage cost, um, square footage, and just, you know, overall it will do all the work for you. So as you edit the comparable section, this slide will repopulate. And then we have, you know, the property pricing right here, um, so in the shortest time possible, and then the marketing plan. So the marketing plan, um, you can re rename it to whatever um, you'd like. Obviously, it's completely editable, uh, but we just put it there um, to help you know generate ideas as to how to use the chapters. So um, this pre-launch uh, launch plan, um, this is uh, all filler text that you can you know it's your jumping-off um, point. So we you can go 
go in and really customize based on what you're doing for your property here. So you just type it in, you know, your step one, your step two um, on the side, and you, know, you add in another step. Um, just whatever you do um, to market your properties, you can then update here. And then you also have, you know, the, the um, video section here, as I mentioned. So if you want to focus on something that you've done in the past for a client um, with property video, um, you can add that in here. And then you have your um, contact page. And right here you'll have, um, you know, all of your collaborators. So you can add them in and they'll pull all of their contact info. So it's nothing that you need to add in. And then for um, presenting mode, I don't know about you, but I, if you've ever um, jumped into a PowerPoint or a PowerPoint presentation and it's just not quite going the way that you thought it was, you spent all this time on organizing the slides, but you know they're you're, the person you're presenting to is wanting to skip to the chapters or say you know let's just get to my listing and property. So what you can do is. Um, with the presenting tool, I'm both moving both vertically and horizontally with the arrows. So you can see right here. So uh, you can jump from chapter to chapter vertically to say, oh, yeah, 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 I know Corcoran. I don't really want to get into that. Um, you know, let's just skip that section. I can just jump into the next chapter and go into about our company and then move horizontally through the slides I prepared. And if, say, they're starting to look a little bored and you just want to move to the next chapter, you just hit down and it goes into you know, the About Me. So let's jump into that video that I uh, showed. So this is the local next door, as Gina mentioned, it, but it really um, what I want to showcase is just how um, the, the, um, the technology works with video and it does help with the lag. Um, I mean, nothing's perfect when it comes to streaming video, but it, it, does, um, it does help that a lot um, rather than with PowerPoint.
home, sit on my porch, have a margarita with my husband, and watch the horses in my backyard. I told you, aren't they cute? It's so cute. These are like local celebrities, the Clydesdales and Rich Hampton. Everybody loves them. Well, I'm gonna let you hang out with your buds, but thanks for just driving me around Rich Hampton today. Yeah, come back and visit next time. Take a ride. Yeah, I will.
Yeah, do you want to take a quick break and um, yeah. then if you've got this one, any questions? Questions, yep. So is this agent studio, is that part of my corporate or is this something separate? Yes, yep. so it lives within my corporate. So I'm just going to jump back. So um, you have your uh, suite of tools right here. So you can always jump into my Corcoran, it's kind of like your home base. Yeah. And then you always have it up and logged into so that if you can see, you know, I'm just clicking into Agent Studio, but what it's doing in the back end is it's verifying your credentials, it's going through your, you know, your single sign-on, so it's doing a lot of the work for you. That way you don't have to remember a million passwords, mm -hmm. and also you can just kind of, it, it's a lot quicker to just dive into to the system. So right here, Agent Studio Online, um, and then you have presentations. We can jump into Marketing Center a little bit after the break, um, and then I just can show you the different tools. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, just feel free to go. Yeah. 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 Yeah
worker in Global Living logo is going to come up um, because I'm, you know, it's, I'm working out with my account. It's just the um, sample. And then here's all the stuff that I added in. And then you can just jump right into your bio and listings. You know, if you have one, throw your website in there or just your um, Corcoran page. Um, that's something that you can then link to. And then it has the social media icons at the bottom as well. And then really, I'm just going into your know, published web, email to contact, share on Facebook, tweet a link. These are really your distribution options. And with your contacts, if you're wondering, okay, can I just do it through the system? The answer is yes. So I'm going to jump into contacts. And so if we uh, recommend this tool is you import your contacts through, you know, a CSV or really just um, a whatever file format, Excel, you want to upload in there. Um, and then that way, when you're sending out emails, you can, you know, still manage groups and um, do all of that organizational functionality. Um, through the platform just so you can keep the messaging going. And I'm also going to show you social media. So say you want to, you know, do a quote, um, inspirational quote, and you want, you know, it's still to be on brand. Um, or, you know, you want to do a, a property photo or just something generic. You can really, you have the possibility to do it here. So I'm going to use this new to market. Of this design, project name, social <coughs> test. Right. And see right there it says search MLS ID or address. So you have the flexibility where the drop down will have, um, I don't have any listings, but the drop down will have your specific listings to work off of, or you can search as well. I'm just going to save and continue. And then so view photos. So depending on how many images are in each template, you'll see there's multiple boxes. And right on the left where it says um, view one, photo one, that's your guide. So that way you know where, you know, which photo is coming up, where, where is that going when it comes to your know, brochure where you have, you know, 12 image options to add in and you want to make sure you're placing each one in the right spot. So I'm going to upload here. And then, so your project photos are all of the um, photos associated with that listing or property that you're working on. Or, you know, you can jump into, you know, stock imagery as well, uh, which we're going to be working with your team to really create a, you know, image gallery that you're able to pull from if it's not necessarily property specific. So I'm just going to use... Um, this image right here, just a couch, um, because I am, they won't all be um, apartment images, it's going to be all localized imagery, um, just to let you know. Um, save and continue. And instead of new to market, maybe um, like new, new property announcement. Couldn't do that, so that's what I'm saying. The character limit it detects right away. So I'm saying you're going to say just new property, and then headline to um, say you know one two three Main Street, and it is saying you know if you're looking at the capital letters, it um, says in the field um, force to uppercase um, to help that stylizing for you. Save, and then I can preview here. And then, so this is the preview only, just so you can see how the layout's already done for me. And then I can download the image, share on Facebook, tweet a link, um, download images because um, Instagram, um, you typically need to upload everything yourself. It doesn't unnecessarily allow a third party to post on your behalf um, because of the uh, privacy. So you just wanted to download that image, and then that way you can update and add it to your Instagram account as a post. And then it will live in my projects. Um, if I ever want to go in and edit or you know change out the headline to do a different type of announcement, it all lives in there. And then is there anything you know particularly you guys want me to show template wise or any questions? <laughs> Do we have any hard copies? 
Um, I, I do not on me, um, but we can um, we can work and get that. You said that you have templates for flyers or yes. brochures. Can you show me, for example, how would an open house flyer or brochure look like? Yeah, so we have Just multiple. Begin. So the, these are you know, your home base. So brochures, you have all your brochure uh, template options. Um, email, other, those are your announcement or your more um, newsletter emails, so more on the lifestyle and news um, aspect. Your email properties, uh, that's really jumping into your open house emails, your featured listings emails. So um, just to get a feel for that organization. Um, your e-newsletter, so that's if you're really focusing on um, something, you can make it either very localized or if you have a lot of different open houses coming up or just a lot of content to share. Um, this is a great template for that. And you can also, rather than keep going back, you can um, toggle between the different sections here as well. So flyers, um, these are you know your one sheet flyers or um, double sided. You can do you know the floor plans and you want to throw into a folder. So I'm going to jump into this just to show you. Um, and you can always view the samples. So as you're starting to get familiar with the um, different templates, um, I do recommend always viewing a sample before diving in, just so you really know um, what the design is going to look like. So. This is a, a, a sample of just the images, um, as I mentioned, all going to be localized. And then you know how it's going to look with the floor plan and just um, the, the copy <coughs> added in. So that's really your, your um, flyer. And so if I want to select this design, I can just jump in here. And typically, um, I'm just putting test in here, but Project name, you should really um, make sure you're keeping these project folders organized. So um, right now I have you know, Ariana Test, but really um, organizing your folders based on you know, your property address that you're working on, or just making sure that that way you can jump in and you can find everything very easily. All right, so um, right here, I'm looking at my guide, I have um, three images on the front, and then I have a floor plan, either a landscape or a portrait option on the back. So if you're looking, you can see that guide on the left, and you can always view the layout um, just to remind yourself where <coughs> things you're inputting are going. So I'm going to add some photos to see what I have available on my project. So I'm just going to drop in images I think will work well. Add selected and it will automatically crop. So what I'm going to do is if I if I see something that just didn't crop well, um, I'm gonna you know jump in there or you know maybe I don't want you know the if that's not that's on a floor plan but it went into that section. So I'm just gonna jump into crop and then you can you know recrop any image if you you know see something um, that didn't automatically crop to your liking. And if you don't have a floor plan, all you have to do is keep these two uh, sections blank and it won't look incomplete. It will um, redistribute the information. Uh, and then so um, because I don't have a listing selected, all this information will be there available um, based on the listing information that you have. Um, but if you know, if you do have a coming soon listing or something that you want to just um, mess around with anyways, you can manually add in the information. But we, we try and really take the manual aspect out of the equation for you just so that you know saves time and have everything moves uh, seamlessly. Then you have the body copy and everything from there. And then this is the agent information. So your headshot will populate here, um, as along with your, you know, your phone number that you have associated with your account. I'm just going to throw in a sample headshot. Recrop it like so. Save and continue. And so. It, um, depending on um, the template, it, um, it redistributes um, the you know the PDF. It, the distribution options change depending on the template. So it says it's for print. Um, download the PDF, download image, 
have preview. We always recommend you know previewing and checking just in case something happened. Um, and then obviously most of the information will already be inputted into the sections, um, but just for timing purposes, since it would be a manual ad for me since I don't have a listing, um, you can just see um, preview your content on how that's going to work there. And then for brochures, we can jump into here. And so I'm going to go into agent contact and do single agent just so that I can see what my options are for brochures. So you have here your 11 by 17, um, 12 photo options. So if you have a lot of images that you want to showcase, um, that would be a great template for you. Um, if you know you don't necessarily have as many, um, I would do, you know, this one where it says, you know, two to five photo option, and then you can jump into there. So these are just examples of all the different design options that you have. Showcase this two to five brochure. I'm going to show you the sample. And so obviously it's showing it upside down because it's going to be a folded brochure. And um, when you send this, for, I highly recommend you know, all brochures using your local printer or Express Docs, whatever um, you typically prefer. Um, if you have a local printer, that's great. You, you know, still use them, um, local printers are the best. Um, just because folding the brochures, we do not recommend printing these in-house because you, you do need a professional eye to know how to make sure you're folding everything correctly. Um, and so you can just see how the different um, information is distributed. Um, and then you can see you know, all the options for the filler content. With, um, this section will be the property description. And then you also have, you have a really large description. You can move it over to have another paragraph, or you can really have bulleted features if you want to highlight something. Is Express Docs going to have all of these templates? So um, when you move, so I'll show you. Um, so Express Docs will um, be, once you go into your projects, right here. So current options. So you have. Express Docs or print it yourself or um, you know when you're downloading the PDF it will give you the option for a commercial print so if you're working with a local printer um, they'll tell you whether or not they want a standard print or a commercial print the commercial print gives them those bleed marks that color bar to make sure that everything's looking just so um, as well as um, crop marks so when you're working with your local printer that's what you want to go there but if you do want to move forward with Express Docs, um, that this is when you know you, they confirm um, the platform is going to bring you directly in through Express Docs, but you got to click OK um, to confirm that you know it's my responsibility to verify the content of the order, and you're just taking responsibility to say I'm going to be ordering one through Express Docs and moving forward. Hit OK, and then it's going to redirect you directly to Express Docs, which has that connection and knows the paper and the different um, templates that we have within the system. So right here you can just order your proof um, and ship the order to me um, if you choose the Express Box um, method or you can download it directly for your local printer. And don't worry, we're going to be going over this a lot. There's a lot of stuff. I don't want to overwhelm anyone. And then once we have all of your listing information, you can really see how everything's going to flow in. So don't get worried that you're going to have a lot of manual entry. We really, um, your teams are working very hard to input all of your data so that it takes you know, that manual entry out of the equation unless you wanted to make any specific edits for a client. Sir, what happens if we got overloaded when you said hello? <laughs> <laughs> well, we recorded it. So you can play back and review our messages. <laughs> or, or I can just give you a copy of your license. And, you know. <laughs> Physically here um, through a Zoom call or any sort of um, 
actually to review everything. So I was just asking, when you're able to upload photos, and obviously you probably want high res photos, but it, it crops for you, but if it's not the right resolution or oh, formatting, then that's kind of how do you fix that? Yes. Yeah. So the images that will be in the system are going to be the highest resolution okay. images. Okay. So when I, when you see me jump into um, product, so when I'm going to go back into photos, so it, if I add in, one, if I add in a low res image, then I'm just adding it in from my computer. So right now, you will have for every listing, um, unless you don't have the images, available for your property yet. Um, those images, once you have them and they are imported into the system, they will be here. And um, what they'll do is they'll select, you know, the first ones that you that are in the system. But if you wanted to add more photos, your other images for that listing that you've imported into the system, it are going to be under project photos. So you can jump and rearrange depending on how you want to add them. But say I do add one, like this one, might be a little more low res. See this um, orange, you know, alert symbol? Right. That's saying, okay, we recommend a larger version. Say, you know, you're doing it in social, doesn't quite, resolution's not as important. I mean, it's still important, but um, because it's on a screen, it's a bit uh, smaller. But for any sort of print, it will alert you, say, hey, this is a low res image. We recommend you add a bigger file. Okay. But it doesn't, if it is social media and you're saying, okay, people are viewing this on their phone, I check the resolution, yeah, it's a little lower, but I think it's, it's fine for social media. It's not going to block you from publishing it. Um, it's just going to alert you so you can still save and continue and then I'll go about creating the, the template. But yes, we're um, working with the team to make sure that the images that we do have in the system are super ginormous, huge, and then what the system does is, is it compresses them itself. Um, but if you don't have the images yet from your property, just make sure that, especially for print, um, that you are using and you're checking and um, previewing to make sure that you don't send something through your local printer and then you get it back and it's just kind of like a fuzzy, gross, low-res photo. So just always make sure you're checking before sending it out to a printer. Um, and then, yeah, you have, um, you know, different stationary options, with note cards. Um, we're going to be adding envelopes on here as well. Uh, if you just want to order something on the fly. Um, postcards, that's your, your, those are your mailers. Um, if you guys are mailer, mailer fans, I don't know if, um, if that's still, you know, we have, it's a, it's a big, it's a heated debate um, across different regions right now, whether mailers are like, oh, people still use those versus markets like Florida, mailers that are like, Hey, you'd be surprised how effective mailers can be. So. We still have the money yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So you have all of that in here. Um, and then, um, as I mentioned, just so you don't feel like you're, you know, I, going through the arrows here, it looks quite overwhelming with the amount of templates. So really, you always want to make sure that you're the first, um, the first thing that you're doing is selecting dual agent, single agent, or team. Just so you know, you, you can search through the organized, um, the organized uh, templates that you have available. So this is um, a property postcard I'm going to showcase, where it's a script. Um, so you can just um, have it be sort of a reminder. I mean, a welcome home here, but you can just say like, you know, hope you're doing well, and it's really more of a um, not a property specific mailer, but just sort of a top of mind reminder to say hi. Okay. All right. On your flyers, do you have those compulsory logos we have to have on them? Yes. So um, your account will have the logos associated. So when you jump in, so my account, um, because I am um, on the corporate corporate level, that's why um, there's the, the you know doing business as name. He 
here, but it will be the core from Global Living, and it will, everything for your account will be um, updated. So that the Equal Housing? Okay. The Equal Housing logo. Will that um, be on? You, so Equal Housing logo we do have on um, certain materials, and then you also have an uh, area specific for your license number. Um, if there are any local nuances that you're not seeing on here, please let us know, and we will definitely have that um, as a field in the system. I think that's really it for, for me. Um, I can play a couple, you know, a couple more local next doors if you'd like, or you know, just give you the rest of your morning back. <laughs> so I appreciate all of your patience and questions and coming. We'll, um, we'll be hanging out here. Just my grab another cup of coffee. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. This is like dream come true kind of stuff for like agents and stuff. This is amazing. So, uh, I'm super excited. And, you know, what we don't learn, I'll be also teaching. I'll be teaching each other how to use this stuff, but I'll definitely spend some time with with you guys on all this stuff too because it's awesome. And the more we use it, the better we'll all do. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.